Can we have an airport safely? Can we ask you a couple questions here real quick? Right. Elian, yesterday the Vice President and the President suggested that Democrats and Venezuela were paying for and organizing the caravan. What proof do you have? Well, the president gets his daily briefing, as does the vice president, and they've been in close touch with DHS and others to find out exactly, I guess, th something you don't seem interested in, which is who is in this caravan, who's coming here. We have a right to know that. <clears throat> I'm not going to comment on that. Anything else? Elliot, you know, talk to me about what's expected to be a very important bipartisan day here at the White House. Oh, you want to talk substance issues? Yay. Uh, yes. And so here at the White House today, the president will sign into law H.R. 6, which is historic comprehensive legislation to tackle our opioid crisis and drug demand, drug supply crisis. It passed the Senate 98 to one, every single Democratic Senator, including those um, who have 12 people showing up to, I guess, 2020 rallies in Iowa yesterday, all of them voted for it. Every single Democratic Senator and every single Republican with the exception of two, one who wasn't there and one who didn't uh, vote for it, has voted for this legislation because this is the crisis next door. It doesn't discriminate by age or gender or race or ge geography or socioeconomic status or political affiliation. Um, H.R. 6 provides many different features. I'll just go over a few quickly. The STOP Act means that our U.S. Postal Service will now share with Customs and Border Patrol more advanced electronic data, the sender, the recipient, the contents of a package. This should cut down almost immediately the suspicious packages coming in from places like Mexico and China that contain illicit opiates like fentanyl. It also increases Medicaid funding or the use of Medicaid dollars for neonatal abstinence syndrome babies. We have 150 babies being born in this country every day struggling for their first breaths are already chemically dependent. It's best to keep the mother and the baby together and this will help. The First Lady has truly elevated this issue into the national consciousness. Also, there's more money in there for workforce development and participation because we have a whole-of-government approach trying to treat the whole person. We recognize that if you're fortunate enough to go into a treatment program or a drug court and you emerge on the other side, sometimes there's no employment, there's no education, there's no skills training, there's no housing. So we're really trying to connect people with that as well. Um, also today, we're going to have commitments from 21 private sector entities. They're making their offers to America. Some of the major retailers, tech companies, um, Cigna Health is coming to announce a new initiative with veterans. Red Cross is going to train 3 million additional Americans on um, how to help people who are overdosing or how to spot the signs. Uh, so it's a really exciting day here at the White House, signing uh, historic legislation, showing the progress that the cabinet departments and agencies have had over the last year and a half of this, and then, of course, um, accepting very gratefully and graciously offers from a private, nonprofit, and profit, for-profit corporate uh, American entities. Tax cuts. Uh, the president said yesterday that a resolution could be coming in the coming days, that Kevin Brady was working on it, but Kevin Brady said that they still need a few, or they still need weeks with the White House and the Treasury, while Larry Kudlow said that anything that could happen here could take a while. It seems like a pretty wide gap there. What's the reality? The reality is that the president sees the tremendous benefits and economic boom from the original Tax Cut and Jobs Act that was signed into law last December. And he sees close to 8 million Americans receiving bonuses or raises or both, the unbelievable repatriation of billions and ultimately trillions of dollars of wealth from overseas where it was legally parked, that the corporate tax rate going from 35% to 21% has meant that these employers are investing in the workplace and the workforce, that people don't just have job availability now or even job security, they have job mobility. Well, I talk to people every day who say, I now have, I can choose a job closer to home so I can be with the family, I can see my kids in the morning, or this one has a better benefits package. So this president wants to continue to reduce the tax burden on middle class families. Obviously the chairman of Ways and Means, Kevin Brady would be working on it. Larry Kudlow has said uh, this, this president loves to cut taxes and reduce the burden on middle class families. They also got a big boon through the child care tax credit and, and through um, some of the other benefits of this particular last tax cut, the, the expansion of the 529s, which didn't get a lot of coverage, allowing people to invest tax-free in education starting younger in their children's... Are we talking about days, weeks, or months here? Though? That really depends on the process. But don't miss the essential point, which is that this president is not yet done 
uh, not tired of winning and not tired of winning on behalf of the middle class thinks that they deserve a permanent tax cut. And let me just politely remind you, not a single Democrat voted for the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act because they said that the corporate America would never reinvest in their employees. And they did exactly that. It has spread an economic boom, historic levels of small business and manufacturing and, and consumer confidence, growth rates that are double what the previous president told us was the new normal of 2% or less, um, wage growth among blue collar workers like where I grew up, and, and, uh, and expanding opportunities in vocational and technical education and skills training. I mean, it's exciting everywhere you turn, the economic numbers are up, including for female employment, African American, Hispanic, Asian American, disabled Americans, teenagers, I hope my two are watching, uh, they're being employed again now, and, and certainly <clears throat> Our veterans are increasingly employed. So the president sees it works and wants to go back and, and hopefully this time have some Democratic support also. Hopefully they've seen uh, literally the benefits and the riches that have come to this to their constituents. Eliana, legal immigration is an important issue, obviously, but is, isn't it simply fear-mongering for the president to say there, there are Middle Easterners in the caravan when he admits he has no proof to support that? No, I saw that fear is one of your uh, Sesame Grover words of the day, the I guess, in the last two weeks. No excuse me, Ill, excuse me. Half of the DHS says over half a million people tried to come over the border illegally in this last year. It's a very serious issue. The president said there were Middle Easterners in the caravan. He acknowledges that DHS says that they. Why isn't that simply fear mongering? Well, you're asking me three different things, but I'm let me. Let's get back. No, you're not. No, you're not. Let's get back. You want to ask about this caravan? Because you talked about illegal immigration. Who's in the caravan? Who's in the caravan? Why aren't the Democrats with the caravan? Why aren't they talking about the caravan? Where are they? This president invited them all into the cabinet room last January and said he would make a deal on the Dreamers. And, and they, they choked on their own disbelief and left because they couldn't believe that this president was actually going to make good on a promise of several presidents. But he also wants to end chain migration. He also wants to end the, the visa lottery system. He also wants to build the wall so that we can be a sovereign nation with physical borders. And don't you want to know who's coming into this country? Don't you want to know if these Hondurans have been promised things that by coyotes who have taken their money? And, and, and put them on this treacherous journey northward. Don't you want to know that everybody, every male who's holding a little girl's hand is in fact her father or her guardian? I want to know. Because if there's one in there who's not her father or her guardian, I want to know. What's because she's in danger and you ought to care about it. I, well, he's going to do, so, he's doing something about it now. We're trying to raise awareness. It'd be great if you'd shine a light on it. And thank you for doing that. Because I'm very concerned about the drug smiling, smuggling, the children smuggling. I've seen the statistics where we have a surge in sexual assaults on that journey. You should all be very concerned about this, folks. It's not a political issue. And I'm, you know, I'm with President Trump in 2018, and I'm with, uh, I'm with then Senator Obama, who I guess had presidential aspirations in 2005. If you go back and you roll that tape, I bet if you put in one of your polling questions, if you said, do you agree or disagree with the following, who do you think said it, people would be very confused. They'd probably think that President Trump had said it, and meanwhile it was Senator Obama. Troops. He's threatened to declare a national emergency, but he hasn't done any of these things. The, well, the president will make that announcement. The president is certainly discussing different options because everybody's very concerned. Mexico has tried to be very cooperative. We're trying to get these three countries in the Northern Triangle to also be cooperative and to keep good relations with these countries and, and to really make sure that people understand the breadth of the president's immigration policy. It's been a year, one year, since he presented to Congress his 70-point immigration plan. I can't think of anybody who's more specific about immigration than the president of the United States. Then he boiled it down to four points for those who couldn't absorb or didn't feel like reading all 70. That didn't even get done. So this president agrees with lots of Democrats like Harry Reid and Chuck Schumer and Barack Obama, who in the past were, sounded a lot like Donald Trump on immigration. And all that's changed is we actually have a president who sits here in this building now who's willing to take action on it. And, and, and you'll see what he has to do. But again, thanks for showing the caravan because I think America has a right in the interest of transparency and accountability and information to see what's happening. Kellyanne, Annie. say Pompeo, and you also know that um, Director Haspel has been sent over to Turkey. And the president made, I think, the strongest remarks to date yesterday in the Oval Office. You've all covered them and you should cover them. He called it the worst cover-up. You can quote the president on that. And until we get all of the um, information, I certainly won't get ahead of the president on that. Thank you.